Welcome back to the airboat build. It's been a while since I worked on it, so um, it's time to get back at it. So last time I welded that uh, fitting onto the oil pan. Uh, since then, I've connected this AN fitting. I think this is a, a dash 12 AN fitting. So I put a 90 on it there. And I had to clearance the bracket a little bit here. But anyway, that's the oil drain from the turbo. So the turbo is done. Now it's time to start working on the fuel system. So I'm gonna use this fuel cell. I'm gonna put it like centered lengthwise around there. For quite a while now I've been staring at this fuel cell, trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount it. So it's partly limited by the pieces of aluminum I have left over. I was hoping I'd have some more of this channel left, but that's gone. What I have is some one inch or maybe it's 1.5 inch aluminum angle. And I have some, a little bit of plate left and some sheet metal. So this will all get a floor at some point. But for now, I want to mount this fuel cell. It needs to be stable, it needs to be strong. I don't know how much this weighs full of fuel, but it's quite a bit. I do want it oriented this way so that there's less side-to-side -side fuel sloshing just for balance really. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to build some aluminum, basically I'm going to build an aluminum bottom to it the size of the cell. I'm going to build, build some feet up uh, so it'll essentially sit as it is there. And then what I want to do also is use this structure as a chair or as a seat, I guess. So I'm gonna build um, from aluminum, just basically a bit higher, up to about 20 inches, and then it'll be a platform to either sit on or to stand on, and the fuel cell will be underneath. I've spent quite a bit of time trying to decide where to put this fuel cell. So the advantage of putting it farther back, so if I move it more under the, under the engine, the advantage of that is apparently it helps boats run dry a bit better. The advantage of moving it forward, moving the weight forward, is that apparently it helps it uh, up on plane. So like everything, there's a balance. So trying to predict the uh, ride qualities on the water versus when I'm running dry. So basically I'm just going to do a bit of a compromise. I'm going to put it somewhere around here. Actually I might move it back a little bit farther. I'll put it somewhere around there because the other uh, factor that's going to 
uh, affect the balance is uh, I still have to put the battery somewhere. So I think I'll put the battery uh, more towards the stern, keep the fuel cell back there. And to mount the actual fuel cell, I'm gonna build a basically a tray for it. So this tray will be raised up above the bar and I'll build some supports in there and then some metal straps to hold it all down. For the pedestals on the tray, my initial plan is I cut a bunch of these and then I was gonna bend them into feet. So what it was gonna be is gonna be like this, like a foot like that, that'd be welded onto the tray to rise it up. When I was bending this one though, so I cut the notches, when I was bending it, that broke. I was able to bend this, I mean, it's pretty strong, but anyway, I'm, I'm worried that the metal there will be too fatigued and with all the vibration in the airboat, that might crack with time. So anyway, I'm scrapping the plan with the angle. What I'll do instead is I just cut these spacers, which is actually, yeah, Kind of a simpler solution anyway. So I'll just just clean up these spacers, weld, weld them on, and that should work pretty well. Ah, the smell of acetone in the morning. Smells like the weekend. So this is the bottom of the support for the fuel cell. It's got the six feet welded on. There'll be bolts going through. And then I'm not sure if it's required or not, but I I cut this extra just scrap plate and it's gonna, I'm gonna rivet it across the side there. And that'll just provide some extra support for the weight of the fuel cell. So this is the completed tray. So fuel cell will sit on there. It's now bolted in. That part's done, I've got the fuel cell on it. So that's the fuel cell mounted where it's gonna be. I have aluminum straps just holding that'll go across there. I haven't bolted them in yet. I'll tighten those down later, but the tray is bolted, that's solid, that's pretty much done. And that's it for mounting the fuel cell. So for the fuel system, I'll show you the parts I've gathered so far. So this is a 22 gallon, obviously plastic fuel cell. This is from Jazz. I've never used them before, but it seems, uh, it seems decent. It's got the, um, the inlet, this is adjustable, I'll, I'll adjust that. Um, once it's mounted up. And then of course it's got, and one of these is a vent and then one of these is an inlet, or an outlet, I guess. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm actually gonna cut a hole and uh, put a in-tank pump. And for that, I'm using this Tanks Inc. Um, kit. And it comes with a bunch of stuff. This is the Walboro 255. That should be enough pump for what I need. Um, about 200, or 550 horsepower is the goal. So that pump should feed that. And then the rest of the stuff, so I'm gonna use this black uh, braided line for the fuel um, pressure regulator. 
We got this air motive one that came with fittings and a gauge and then a bunch of hose ends. And I can't remember, oh, there's a filter there. I don't remember why exactly I bought all these, but I did think about it at some point. So hopefully I have everything I need. And then these are the adapters to connect um, to the, the GM fuel rails. So this is Tank Sink. It's the PA-4 fuel pump module with a 25 or the 255 Walboro pump. So I haven't uh, done one of these before, but I'll figure it out. Now, there are requirements for the depth of the cell. So it, it is adjustable to a certain degree. Um, this will be the top. So you have supply, return, and the vent, and then the electrical connections for the sender. And I don't remember the numbers exactly, but there's, there is a range that they specify for the depth of the tank. And that was actually what determined what size fuel cell I could I got um, because it had to fit in that range. And I wanted an internal pump, uh, basically just uh, to keep things quiet. You know, I've on cars previously I've had external pumps and they get kind of annoying after a while. So anyway, hopefully inside the cell it'll be more quiet. And uh, this kit should have pretty much everything I need to hook it up. I'm going to read the instructions and then we'll get started on it. So this will go in here, and it is too long for the depth, but as I mentioned it's adjustable. So to the top of the plastic there are nine and three quarters, nine and a half to the bottom. say to cut this to one inch from the bottom of the, of the tank or the cell. So that will go like that. So this tray is attached and that basically sits at the bottom it seems like. So I've got that. You can adjust it to just sit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Now the pump is installed. The um, supply line attaches to that barb at the top there. And then there's the return plastic tube. It goes on that barb apparently. And then apparently has to be an inch above the bottom of the tray. And they say you might have to use a heat gun. And I, well, it looks like I am 100% gonna need a heat gun. There's no way that's going on without. So let's see how that works. Okay, now the assembly is done. There's just these nylon ties that kind of just hold everything in place. The pump is there. It's ready to be wired up at the top here. And uh, it's ready to get dropped into the cell. So now that uh, most of the screws are started, it's quite a bit easier. Basically, they're they're all lined up, so now it's just a matter of dropping all the screws in. So I'll finish this off, and then that'll be it for today. Um, basically, so the fuel cell is pretty much done, and the mount in the boat is done. So I'll put it together and put it back in the boat, and fuel cell is done. Next time, uh, I'll work on the fuel lines. Thanks for watching.